When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children for Jacob, she became jealous of her sister. She pleaded with Jacob, Give me children or I'll die. Then Jacob became furious with Rachel. Am I God? he asked. He's the one who has kept you from having children. Then Rachel told him, Take my maid Bilhah and sleep with her. She will bear children for me, and through her I can have a family too. So Rachel gave her servant Bilhah to Jacob as a wife, and he slept with her. Bilhah became pregnant and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, for she said, God has vindicated me. He has heard my request and given me a son. Then Bilhah became pregnant again and gave Jacob a second son. Rachel named him Naphtali, for she said, I have struggled hard with my sister, and I'm winning. Meanwhile, Leah realized that she wasn't getting pregnant anymore, so she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Soon Zilpah presented him with a son. Leah named him Gad, for she said, How fortunate I am. Then Zilpah gave Jacob a second son, and Leah named him Asher, for she said, What joy is mine! Now the other women will celebrate with me. One day during the wheat harvest, Reuben found some mandrakes growing in a field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel begged Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But Leah angrily replied, Wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now will you steal my son's mandrakes too? Rachel answered, I will let Jacob sleep with you tonight if you give me some of the mandrakes. So that evening, as Jacob was coming home from the fields, Leah went out to meet him. You must come and sleep with me tonight. She said, I have paid for you with some mandrakes that my son found. So that night he slept with Leah. And God answered Leah's prayers. She became pregnant again and gave birth to a fifth son for Jacob. She named him Issachar, for she said, God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband as a wife. Then Leah became pregnant again and gave birth to a sixth son for Jacob. She named him Zebulun. For she said, God has given me a good reward. Now my husband will treat me with respect, for I have given him six sons. Later she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel's plight and answered her prayers by enabling her to have children. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. God has removed my disgrace, she said, and she named him Joseph. For she said, May the Lord add yet another son to my family. Jacob's wealth increases. Soon after Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Please release me, so I can go home to my own country. Let me take my wives and children, for I have earned them by serving you, and let me be on my way. You certainly know how hard I have worked for you. Please, listen to me. Laban replied, I have become wealthy, for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Tell me how much I owe you. Whatever it is, I'll pay it. Jacob replied, You know how hard I've worked for you, and how your flocks and herds have grown under my care. You had little indeed before I came, but your wealth has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed you through everything I've done. But now, what about me? When can I start providing for my own family? What wages do you want? Laban asked again. Jacob replied, Don't give me anything. Just do this one thing, and I'll continue to tend and watch over your flocks. Let me inspect your flocks today, and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled or spotted, along with all the black sheep. Give these to me as my wages. In the future, when you check on the animals you have given me as my wages, you'll see that I have been honest. If you find in my flock any goats without speckles or spots, or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen them from you. All right, Laban replied. It will be as you say. But that very day Laban went out and removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted or had white patches, and all the black sheep. He placed them in the care of his own sons, who took them a three days' journey from where Jacob was. Meanwhile Jacob stayed and cared for the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees and peeled off strips of bark, making white streaks on them. Then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, for that was where they made it. 
And when they made it in front of the white streaked branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated those lambs from Laban's flock, and at mating time he turned the flock to face Laban's animals that were streaked or black. This is how he built his own flock instead of increasing Laban's. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob would place the peeled branches in the watering troughs in front of them. Then they would mate in front of the branches. But he didn't do this with the weaker ones, so the weaker lambs belonged to Laban, and the stronger ones were Jacob's. As a result, Jacob became very wealthy, with large flocks of sheep and goats, male and female servants, and many camels and donkeys. Thank <laughs> you.